Are you trying to restrict access to certain features and boards within monday.com to certain users? Well, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you how to set up board permissions, column permissions, workspace permissions, and even account permissions for both the pro plan and the enterprise plan. And I'll also show you my recommended settings. So let's get started. Before we get started, you can actually download the whole document about permissions that I created, including all of the information about how to change everything and recommended settings with easy to see and use table views such as these. Um, and now we'll go through this whole document one by one to make sure you know exactly what to do. So let's just get started at the top. Well, it's good to know that there are certain features only available to the enterprise plan, while the other features are also available to the other plans. In this case, we have board permissions and column permissions that are available to the pro plan, whereas uh, workspace permissions and account permissions are only available to the enterprise plan. I'll uh, make sure that there's timestamps in the video so you just can click on the right permissions you'd like to see uh, or you can just follow along with me during this video. Let's get started with the permissions that are interesting for everyone which are the board permissions and the column permissions and after that I go into enterprise. So board permissions, where can I find them? Well, if you go to a board on the top right hand side, you'll see the three dots and then it says permissions. And uh, keep in mind, you need to be an admin to see this. And then when you um, open it, you will see something like this. And there's actually a few things you can change. You can change the viewing permissions and the editing permissions. The viewing permissions option is only available to enterprise. So if you want to use this one, you need to have an enterprise plan. Um, could be useful for your situation. And this one can actually be set by everyone. So um, I would recommend using this specific uh, uh, choice because it allows your team uh, or the members to this board to change the content, but not change its structure. So they cannot really change a column or you know uh, delete a column or rename a column. They can only do stuff in the board without uh, changing the board structure. And I recommend this because once you start using Monday more and more, you'd like to have very standardized boards for, for example, a project or a client. And when people just start doing their own thing and start creating their own boards in their own way, uh, you'll see that it's quite hard to get data into dashboards and to build overviews. And it becomes quite troublesome at some point. So feel free to change this, but I would recommend to put it onto this one. Um, but maybe, for example, you have a board where you just only want people to see it and only write updates and then you shoot this one. So just look at the options and choose the one that you think makes most sense. But I usually recommend this one. So that's actually everything uh, with regards to the board permissions. Pretty straightforward. And then we have column permissions. So when you go to a column and you hover over it, you'll see this icon. And if you go to settings, there's actually two settings. Restricting column editing and restricting column view. Well, editing uh, might sound pretty obvious. When you click here, uh, you can actually restrict people from editing the column. This means that they cannot edit the value. So let's say we would uh, use this in this column. The team cannot change the person that's assigned in this column, except for the people that are allowed to change it. So you can determine which users are allowed to. Could be a very useful feature if there's a column that you you know don't want them to change um, such as maybe there is i don't know uh, a column such as um, if your budget is approved maybe you only want managers to be able to approve a budget and not users well then you can restrict column editing so some people can and some people cannot change it super useful then you have also have the uh, restrict column view feature also very useful this one is uh, useful to show or hide data for certain people. So let's say you have an HR board where there's the salary of your employees and you want to show the HR board because it has information such as birth date or you know, emergency phone numbers. So it needs to be shown to everyone, but we shouldn't show the salary to everyone. Well, then we can restrict the column view to certain people such as you know, only the HR team and then all the other people cannot see it useful feature you can also use it by for example when you start sharing a board with a guest maybe you want to show uh, you're sharing it with a client and you don't want to show like how many hours you're estimating on a task um, then you can hide that column for that client but maybe not for your own team so that's how you can use this feature very very useful 
Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's good to know. And now we'll go into more of like the enterprise stuff. Uh, as it says here, enterprise only. So for premium, uh, pro or the other plans, it's actually not possible to see this. Yeah, so if you go into um, uh, the workspace and then you hover over the three dots that you see here, then you have a button manage workspace. And once you're there, there's this uh, button for permissions. And if you cannot click on this, it means you don't have access to it. And here you actually have three default roles. So you have an owner of the workspace, a member and a non-member. And members can obviously be added in the members tab. Here you can actually see all the things that owners, uh, members and non-members can do. So you can just change those features based on what you like them to see. Um, here I have a few recommended settings. I won't go too much in detail for these, but it just makes sense that if you see a red cross, it means that you shouldn't uh, enable that feature for those people. And if you see a green check mark, it means it should be enabled. In my opinion, like feel free to change this in your own way. You can do whatever you want, um, but I would just recommend these settings. So as I said, feel free to download this guide in the first link in the description so you can just follow along. If I ever make changes or change my opinion, I will also change this document, whereas it's quite hard to change this YouTube video. So yeah, feel free to just download the guide for free. I'll just scroll over them so you can see it. But as you can see, uh, members have quite a lot of access, but usually what you'd like to restrict for normal members is changing uh, things like creating automations and integrations. It's usually not ideal to have them do that stuff. Uh, same is true for you know, deleting items created by other users. Maybe you don't care and you feel like, well, members are allowed to do that. Feel free to just change this to a green check mark. But you also want to be some sort of restrictive, especially if your users are not very tech savvy and can break things when they don't even understand what they're trying to do. So keep that in mind when you set the permission settings. Then we go into account permissions. This is also enterprise only. And this one goes a bit more in depth. So if you go to the admin panel of your account, keep in mind, you need to be an admin, then you will see the, uh, oh, oops, this is actually, yeah, you would go into permissions at the bottom. And then, by the way, if you cannot see this, it means you're not an enterprise. So keep that in mind. Um, there's a few things to note here because it, as you can see here is a big list of things you can set. And there's one thing that I would actually recommend because the, the basic, roles are guest, viewer, member, and admin. And I would, what I would recommend is adding a manager role, which is a custom role. And I'll explain why, because as we'll just scroll through this, as you can see, most of the stuff between a manager and admin is the same. However, there are certain things you would like a manager not be able to do, but you want to give access to a, uh, an admin, such as generating an API token. Maybe your COO or CFO or you know just a manager in the company needs to have access to almost everything, shouldn't have really access to things like generating API tokens. Well, then it's great to have a, a role for this where only admins can do that. Same with integrations, experimental features, um, and a few other things. So I'll explain how to create that specific role. Um, when you're in the permission section, you can actually click on create a new role, which looks something like this. And then you can just call it manager. Uh, and I would recommend that it's based on the member role and not on the admin role. Then um, what's also good to know after you've created it, you can just follow along with the uh, settings I recommend, but I'll just go into depth in depth for one specific thing, because what you'll find in things like upload files, there's this toggle uh, icon, which allows you to be very specific on what files people can upload. And these kind of details are, you'll see that with a few options. Uh, I didn't really include them in this sheet because it goes quite in depth and it's really determined. It's, it's really, you would need to determine it based on the company policy. So maybe you guys don't use OneDrive and SharePoint. Well, just turn it off. Same with Box and Dropbox, um, you know, th those kind of things or maybe you want to force people to use a specific method, well, then you can do it like this. Just good to know that you can find those details by clicking on those uh, toggle icons. So I won't go into too much detail once again here on like uh, why I made certain decisions. Just what's good to know is that guests won't have many things they can do. Viewers can do almost nothing. 
members can do quite a lot. However, members don't really have this admin types of uh, level features. So for example, they cannot delete views created by other users and they cannot export data to Excel. This is actually, I think by far the most important one to check because by default, almost all your users can export data to Excel, uh, which could be a big problem for your permissions, you know, uh, for your security stuff. When just a guest can download all uh, data, that's usually a problem. So that's why I turned it off for almost everyone except for managers and admins. Um, I'm just scrolling through it to see if there's anything else that needs some more uh, thought. I think what's just good to know is that sometimes, uh, yeah, once again here, you need to think of your organization and how tech savvy your users are and how restrictive you want to be or how free you want to be. Uh, maybe, for example, you don't want to allow members to just broadcast a document on the web. Um, you know, for my company, I would say go for it if you guys want to use it. But maybe you guys have so, uh, you know, you guys are very restrictive and just don't want to give access to too many things. Or maybe your users are just not so tech savvy, and therefore don't really know what they're doing. Then you might need to turn that off. You could even consider adding a member tech savvy and a member non tech savvy role. So you can give access based on how tech savvy a person is to make sure that everything is under control in your account. Um, once again here, yeah, I'll just scroll through it. If I ever update it, you'll see it in the document when you download it, because it's always, it's like a living and breathing document. So it will keep evolving, um, but I'll just scroll through the options. So you'll see them. As you can see, big difference between an admin and a manager. Uh, the manager is not allowed to change those permissions, whereas an admin is. And that's really why I made the uh, extra manager role because there's just things that managers shouldn't be able to do, uh, which admins should be able to do. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you like it and can now set up your permissions just the way you want it. Make sure to leave a like to help the channel out for free, to subscribe to the channel as well to never miss out on the newest videos that I post. If you have questions, just post them in the comments. I'd be happy to help. And don't forget to download the free guide in the first link in the description, because as I said in the video, I'll update it when I learn new things or change my mind on certain permission settings. Keep in mind, these are all the basics that I recommend by default. Change them the way you think they should be changed. Um, and if you really need personalized help, feel free to reach out to me by my contact details in the description. And yeah, that's it. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.